So you're considering making a move to the Sunshine State and wondering how much it really costs to live in Florida. Well, in today's video, I'll cover everything from the rising housing prices, taxes, the crazy cost of insurance, and other expenses that you need to consider while you're deciding whether Florida's right for you. All right, y'all, so I wanted to bring this video. It is tax time here in 2023, and we've already done cost of living videos here in Florida. We Actually, we do one annually, and I think it's super important to do that. But, you know, it being tax time, me and Kate, we just got done wrapping up our taxes here, and let me just tell you, holy wow, right? And you're gonna start to see these articles trickle out here over the next two to three months as people file their taxes, get it all done, and the Census Bureau brings it out. But I just want to share this with you because we're looking through our budget and of course, just like everyone else, we are feeling the real pinch of inflation, right? The real cost of living. And I wanted to make sure I get into that today because I came across this article because when I, when I recognized how much more money we spent this year, I went back and immediately started looking and I found this article from last year that said that Florida residents need to make on average 74% more to own a home and live in the area. Now, this is assuming the nuclear family. So just so you guys know, Oh, and if we've never met before, my name is Juan Alcala. I'm a licensed real estate agent and a team leader here with the True Living Group. We help people just like you buy, sell, relocate, and invest here in the Tampa Bay area. We also make videos that are all things Tampa Bay. What it's like to live here, what it's like to work here, what it's like to play here, the food, the dining, the outdoors, the beaches, and the sunshine. So if you're into that sort of thing, make sure you click that subscribe button and hit that little bell. And that way you can be notified every time we drop a new video. But let's get back into this, right? So we're, we're running our tax numbers. It is quite clear that everything costs more money. Now, I know what you're saying. Juan, that's not new news to me. I live in California or I live in New York or I live in uh, Indiana and everything is more expensive. That is 100% true. But one of the calls that I most frequently get and one of the most frequently asked questions, if you even go to Google and look it up, is what does it really cost to live in the state of Florida, right? How much money do you really have to make in order to live in the state of Florida? So I wanted to get into some of these numbers because when I pulled that article, it said roughly that you needed to make about $131,000 a year to um, be able to purchase a new home here in the state of Florida. And we're gonna get into what that means right now. Um, you know, assuming again that you're the nuclear family, which is, you know, a husband, wife, two kids, um, a dog, you know, automobiles, the whole thing. So we're gonna get into these numbers. I wanna share these guys with you and break them down because I not only did uh, we do our taxes and look at the annual budget here, but we also compared it to what other people are doing in the United States right now, especially here in Florida. And man, they are really close. We've spent more in certain areas. We spent less in other areas. I think you're probably gonna find yourself in those ranges too. But I think this is really important to know because if you are considering making a move to Florida, whether that be Tampa, Orlando, Miami, Jacksonville, Pensacola, wherever you're thinking, it is definitely important for you to have a good sense of what it costs to live here. Um, so I wanna get into some of these numbers. So the first thing that I came across was, you know, the average mortgage interest rate right now is somewhere between six and a half and 7% at the time of this recording. It's going to fluctuate throughout the year. It might be the same when you watch this video a year from now, I'm not sure, but we're assuming roughly a 6.5% interest rate. And we're gonna put you in that median home category. Now, if you look on Redfin right now, it says the median home in the Tampa Bay area costs $393,000, which is just a few thousand dollars below the national average, which sounds cool, but really what is it what does it really cost that's the intent of this video and i'm going to be honest with you if you're buying a decent three bedroom two bath home anywhere in the tampa bay area you're going to be spending at least 450. so i put that number in because i want to keep it real y'all so we drop in the 450 number we're going to assume that you're putting a 10 percent uh, down payment that number varies as well we typically see a first time home buyer you know in that seven percent range and you know uh someone who's buying their second or third home they can do as much as 20 percent so we're just going to assume it's 10%. Um, we're going to give you a tax rate of right around $5,600 annually. And then I'm going to assume that insurance is going to be $3,500. Um, now we have definitely gotten lower for specific clients. It has definitely been way more if you're in a flood zone in specific areas. So take this with a giant Himalayan grain of salt. I'm trying to give you an average, but what that comes out to be with, you know, 10% down a 450 purchase, you know, insurance taxes, private mortgage insurance, that's roughly a $3,500 a month payment. 
which is not a small thing to wrap your mind around. So when you look at these numbers, understand really quickly that housing is definitely up there. And if you were to rent a three bedroom, two bath in a really nice area, you might be able to find one right now for you know 23 to 2800, um, depending on the condition of the home. So just sharing that with you as well. So it is a little bit less to rent, but you don't own anything when you're done. So this is really kind of a personal preference. But I thought this was something we needed to tackle right out of the gate. All right, the second one on my list here is utilities. And in our utility category, we have electric. We don't have gas here, just so you know. Um, you might where you end up purchasing, but we don't have gas. We only have electric. So electric stove, electric water heater, and then we run our AC off electricity as well. We also have a pool. So that influences this a little also because that pool pump runs quite a bit in the summer. And then we put our water included in the utilities there as well and sewer. So those are the numbers that we came up with. And we came up with an average of 500. We're a little bit more, but I don't have the, the best windows here. So I'm trying to like balance that out. Um, our house is pretty well insulated, but I know we're, le we're leaking a little something. So I wanted to put that number in there. And as I looked around, asked my clients the same thing, that is not an abnormal number. $500 for, you know, water, um, you know, utilities, and uh, you know, whether that's gas and electricity is a really good range to kind of wrap your mind around. The next category is food and dining. And I think this one can fluctuate a ton. So um, I know what ours is, I'll share that with you. I know what the, the national average is as well, but you know, just looking at this, you know, if you've got five mouths to feed and assuming you got a dog too, a Fido, because a lot of people do, but even remove the dog, because dog's not included in this category, but I know people kind of uh, put that into their budget from time to time too. But we assume, that the you know a, a family of five you know you're probably going to be spending somewhere between two, you know fifteen hundred and two thousand dollars a month on average we spend a little bit more um, we like to go out to eat a little bit more um, and things have gone up you, you guys go to the restaurants now you know you know we pay more for groceries at home they pay more for food in the door so that costs more when it hits the table there but you know two thousand dollars I think is a fair budget I, I don't know too many people that are getting along you know with, with five miles to feed you know, in that thousand dollar range anymore. It's just so difficult to do. And we don't shop at Whole Foods or anything crazy. My wife shops at Publix and Costco, which are two very common places that we feel like we get a pretty good bang for our buck. Again, everything's expensive, but this is just what we have to deal with. The next category is auto. Now, I did some bundling here, right? And um, no, I'm not like Priceline, <laughs> but I just assume that we can kind of put some of these things together. So this is going to be car payments. This is going to be insurance. And I actually included uh, gasoline in here as well. If you got a diesel, so be it. But you know, we're a little bit below average, um, you know, so I just wanted to share that with you. One of our cars is paid off. We have a lease um, on our expedition. Um, got a really fair deal on that. Um, but when I look, when I started digging around online here and I was looking at um, new car prices, I was shocked because I was considering adding another automobile. Um, our Volkswagen has treated us so well, but it's time for me to upgrade. It doesn't have all the fancy bells and whistles and not that I need it, but we're in Florida. It would be really nice to have cooled seats because when you put your or behind on leather that is not cooled in the summer, man, it gets hot and it hurts. So <laughs> we were considering doing that first world problems, by the way, but I'd rather not have a payment. So I'm, you know, in this, I'm cool to suffer zone and maybe you are too, but I just figured I'd share this with you. But I started looking at these numbers because interest rates are up not only for, for houses, but they're up for automobiles as well. And I came across this article that said that the new car payment in Q4 of 2022 on average is $716. And I was like, oh my word, that is such a big number, huge number. The average used car payment is over $500 and the average payment is now up to eight years in, in duration, which is crazy. But when we put those things together, $1,800, again, I think we're below you know, let me know what it costs where you live. You know, uh, our auto insurance is $4,000 a year, which is definitely higher than it was when we left Detroit. Um, Florida has the most uninsured drivers on the road, according to uh, the, the insurance companies. I don't know if they're telling the truth or not, but there is a lot of tomfoolery <laughs> when it comes to Florida and drivers. So I would believe that. And that was a big expense, um, you know, for us as well. You know, we don't pay any personal income tax in the state of Florida. So that was a huge win, but it did get sucked up with our auto insurance and our homeowners insurance. So I think it's important for you to note that. But you know, I don't know where you guys sit. If you had two car payments over $500, you know, you're spending somewhere between.
between $300 and $500 on gasoline um, and you're paying for your insurance as well, I think you're going to be somewhere in between that $1,500 and $2,200 range. But, you know, obviously you got your own budget. Check it out. Let me know in the comments below. The next category was healthcare. Um, I know a lot of people, if you're a W-2 employee, you know, your employer's paying either um, a, a good chunk or at least a piece of it. I, there are very few people who are employed by companies that pay their full insurance company. If you're one of those, congratulations. Put that in the comment below. We would love to know who the unicorn is in the room <laughs> because I don't know anybody like that anymore. Um, everybody's paying at least a portion of it. And the article said the average expense for healthcare for a United States family was right around $500 a month. So go ahead and chalk that up to your budget annually. That's a big one too. So student loans. Kate and I, we're pretty fortunate. We don't have any student loans, um, thank goodness, but I know that's not common. You know, as I help people, you know, relocate from all over the country here to the Tampa Bay area and all over Florida, the, one of the things I know is when they go to the mortgage person, you know, they come back and we have conversations and yep, hey, I got a student loan or I've got two or, you know, both the both spouses have student loans and, you know, you may or may not, but, you know, the, the average student loan payment in the United States is $250 a month. So if there's two of y'all, we went ahead and put 500 in that category. Um, just that way we can make sure everything's lined up. Phone and internet. Now, I know I didn't put these in utilities. I could have, um, but I kept them separate for a reason just because uh, we're business owners and we need them to, to run our business, right? We help people buy and sell real estate. So um, we kind of categorize it a little bit different, but here's what I know. For the two of our phones and internet, we were right smack at that average of $300. Um, we have AT&T. We've got the, you know, a full-blown whatever it is, right? Like unlimited everything um, and it's great we're considering making a move over to Verizon right now just because of service in the Tampa Bay area that's a side note um, Verizon is the stronger network we were on AT&T for years I know I'm going tangent right now but this is important if you're considering moving here um, but it's the same thing we're roughly gonna pay the same thing when we move over to Verizon and our internet is not expensive here I don't know what it costs where you live I mean heck we've even got communities here in the Tampa Bay area where you get internet and cable included with your HOA fees so that's something to be mindful of but it's still another fee you're paying somewhere else it's never free right so um, something to consider but that $300 mark seems to be pretty good we have uh, fiber internet here I'm blessed uh, internet in the area as a whole is pretty strong you've got spectrum um, who offers like a gig up, gig down. You are you are in broadband, so you're sharing that network. And then you've got Frontier who offers fiber um, dedicated lines, which is what we have complete, feel completely fortunate about it. And we're a gig up, gig down for like $75 a month. That's a really good price in my mind. All right, now we're getting onto that miscellaneous category. And hey, if you're getting any value out of today's video, please hit that like button. It tells the internet that this video is valuable. That way other people just like you can find it. Um, and also do not hesitate to share your budget down below in the comments. I would love to know more about that and why you're down there. All of my contact information is down there as well. So if you have any questions regarding, you know, buying, selling, or relocating to the Tampa Bay area, do not hesitate to reach out. But let's get in this miscellaneous category. Now, as a household, you got to figure out where to put things. You know, you may have a clothing budget. I don't. Me and Kate are pretty laid back in that respect. We moved to Florida for a reason. All of my suits have lived in my closet since we've moved here. I'm pretty sure none of them fit anymore. I may be a little bit fluffier than I was when I moved down. <laughs> um, but we basically live in, you know, shorts and t-shirts and flip-flop. We moved down here for the flip-flop lifestyle, y'all. So it might be important to you. It might not. I just want to share with you. We don't have a huge clo clothing budget, but we've got a dog. We've got an 85 pound Doberman. Uh, by the way, she likes to eat a lot and she has to go to the vet. So that's part of that category. Um, cleaning supplies go in the miscellaneous garbage bags. You know, if I go to Home Depot, that's kind of one of those categories that gets sucked up. It's the catch all. If you got a drunk drawer, that's probably what your miscellaneous category is on your budget too, right? But we put 500 bucks in that because I think that makes And the last category you've got here is taxes and savings. Making all that money is great, but at the end of the day, Uncle Sam's always gonna be standing there. I mean, we started this video by telling you it's April 15th and guess what? <laughs> He's standing there with his hand out right now. So, you know, I wanted to find out what the average family's paying because I know what we pay in taxes. It does not, it feels anything but average. It hurts a lot. Um, I'm an entrepreneur. I have to pay a lot of taxes. It's just part of the deal, right? Um, a W-2 employee, I remember when I was working for a company, um, I didn't, 
I didn't pay as much taxes, but this is the exchange we make, y'all. You know, this is the land of the free. It's also the home of the taxed. So that's where we're at. Um, and it's that on average, the American family gets taxed about 11%. And then I put 10% in for taxes. I made it a 20% category. So, you know, push it one way or the other. Maybe you're fortunate enough to where you're not paying 11% in taxes. God bless you. Um, you know, or maybe this is a 25% category for you. But I basically stack this up versus that entire um, in or expense category and added another 20% for taxes and savings, um, which got us to a grand total of $137,196. Holy cow. That's not mine, right? This is on average. And again, the article from 2022 said it was 131 and we came up with 137. I have a funny feeling that when the Labor of Bureau and Statistics puts out their new um, data sheet that it's going to be closer to that 140, 145 mark. I could be off base. I'll share it with you guys when I, when I see it. And then I'm also going to put the links to those articles down below in the description so you guys can check those out. But here's the thing. I don't know where you're watching. I don't know why you're considering calling Florida home. You know, I don't know what it costs to live there. I know a lot of the times I talk to people, insurance is different, of course, um, but they're paying, you know, state income tax and we don't. So like apples to apples can be difficult. Putting together your budget and then having conversations like this is super important. If you guys want more information on what it, you know, what it costs to run a household here in Florida, what roofs cost, you know, those types of things, I'm more than willing to share our experience. I'm not a general contractor, but I am very open um, to having these discussions with people who are considering making this move because it's important. I didn't have somebody we could lean on when we decided to move our family from Detroit, Michigan to Tampa, Florida almost, almost five years ago now. Um, and it's just been an absolute absolute blessing and I would be paying roughly around the same if we were living back home in, in western Wayne County in Detroit Michigan um, if I was gonna move to New York or Los Angeles I'd be spending way way more money so you know these considerations matter you know I know sometimes will people will call me and you know they just haven't done the homework yet and that's okay you know but I'm hoping this really helps you you know, put this together in a meaningful way where you can just wrap your arms around and go, yeah, we can absolutely do that. Or that's not going to be a problem for us. Or it might be a big stretch and we're not quite ready for it. I think those things are important and not everybody likes to tackle topics like this. So I really wanted to get in this today and I hope that you receive value out of this video. We're going to put two more videos up here about living in Florida or relocating the area. Hopefully those are valuable for you as well. And until next time, go out and live that Tampa life.